All right, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. It's, it's Dr. Goyle here. And uh, you know, I'm doing these live videos because I think this is the best way to get current information out to you as fast as possible. And today I want to talk about nitric oxide, which is one of those supplements that uh, really impacts heart health. Um, it was basically first discovered, uh, discovery of nitric oxide benefit was first discovered in 1998 and a Nobel Prize was awarded at that time. Um, and it's really important because it's the molecule that carries messages between cells and uh, it acts on a number of different systems. We're mostly concerned about the vascular system, so the system that deals with blood flow and how, nit how important nitric oxide is for that. So basically nitric oxide is produced by many cells, like pretty much all the cells in your body, but it's also produced by the small cells that line your blood vessels called the endothel endothelial cells. And these cells produce nitric oxide um, that basically um, what we call maintains the vascular tone of those vessels, meaning that it uh, increases the, it dilates those blood vessels so more blood can get through and allows the blood cells to go to move through uh, at the very small level. I think I've talked about this in a previous um, live uh, we did last week. Um, so definitely has importance with bringing blood flow and that's why uh, nitric oxide, this pathway and this molecule is impacted uh, when people take um, Viagra or Cialis for erectile dysfunction or just have better erections. Uh, that uh, those medications uh, basically help make nitric oxide more available for your for your tissues and so bring more blood flow and a better erection. So I'm going to do another live just on how Viagra works and Cialis works, but just wanted you to know um, the impact of uh, nitric oxide and blood flow and probably one of the most important uses these days is is the use of nitric oxide, understanding nitric oxide for, um, for you know, erectile dysfunction. Um, it also, as I said, because it works on, on all blood vessels, it will uh, tend to lower blood pressure because again, if you dilate something, then you reduce the pressure that's going through that pipe. And um, so, you know, one of certain types of blood pressure medications are uh, nitrate based means that they increase nitric oxide um, they're not used as much anymore because they have some side effects but uh, they are a type of category of blood pressure pills and then uh, nitroglycerin which you've heard about so when people have a heart attack or chest pain we tell them to take a spray of nitroglycerin that's because we want right away those small little blood vessels to dilate and bring blood flow because the reason someone's having angina or chest pain uh, or a heart attack is because all of a sudden less blow, blood flow is going to that part of the heart causing pain or actually heart damage. Um, nitric oxide has also a number of effects on metabolism of uh, glucose, fats, and amino acids. It's That's a whole other life and we can go into that, but basically it regulates the energy of uh, how mitochondria use these uh, fuels and so it does impact uh, energy levels in, in the person. Um, so like I mentioned before, so we love, we really want to uh, think nitric oxide is super important. And so how do you get that? So there's two major pathways. There's the uh, pathway that's caused, uh, what's called the arginine uh, NO synthase, nitric oxide synthase pathway. And the second pathway is coming in from diet uh, by taking in nitrites from your diet, mostly vegetables, green vegetables. Um, and then that also helps form nitric oxide. So let's take one by one. First one is um, the L-arginine uh, NO synthase, so nitric oxide synthase pathway. And so what happens here is um, L-arginine or even L-citrulline um, these are uh, amino acids and they um, break down or they, they convert into nitric oxide through uh, an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase. Um, and that's why you've seen a lot of these supplements, the um, bodybuilder supplements or just pre-workouts and stuff that contain L-arginine and L-citrulline uh, because they help 
produce uh, nitric oxide and nitric oxide is very important for blood flow and like I said for energy and metabolism so that's why these supplements contain uh, L-arginine but there's it can only go so far like there's a rate limiting stack of how much you can increase nitric oxide through this pathway um, so the second uh, way and that's most people are not really aware of is the importance of taking nitrites through your food and we'll do a different live on just you know what foods contain how much nitrates and things like that but suffice to say most people do not take in enough uh nitrates into their into their diet because uh nitrates the amount of nitrates that are available in the vegetables varies a lot depending on how those vegetables were grown so you know um you know some spinach grown in this particular area or province or state or whatever may have like you know one fifth of the nitrates that's of it uh, of that same produce that's grown in a different area depending on the soil conditions and how much nitrates were in the soil so it's not a re very reliable way these days to take in vegetables to get your nitrate um, amounts so these so just back up a second so those, that nitrate that you get in from from vegetables most people get that in um, then nitrate has to convert to nitrate and that happens through bacteria in our GI tract, more specifically in our mouth. So um, there's a bacteria in our mouth that converts nitrate to nitrate, and then that nitrate gets converted to nitric oxide. Um, so you can see there's a couple of steps there, and, there, and there's you know a couple of different factors that that influence the nitrate to nitric oxide conversion as well. But suffice to say that it's pretty important first of all you need to get the nitrate in so we're going to talk about that and then you need to make sure it gets converted to nitrate through this bacteria and if you're taking like mouthwash listerine like four times a day you're killing those bacteria if you're having a you know um, a lot of fluoride toothpaste and all that like and constantly doing that in your mouth you you, you could be killing those bacteria that's converting the nitrate to nitrate. So uh, that's why it's very important to have a healthy uh, microbiome in your mouth so that you're not, you have the right type of bacteria that can make that conversion. And I will do uh, another time just looking at the studies that have been shown that in people who use mouthwash, how their nitric oxide levels are just not as good as the people who don't. So there's a, a little beware there and something that I found was really interesting when I learned about it just maybe uh, six months ago. Um, apart from that, I just want a couple of things I wanted to just really talk about. Um, um, here we are. Yeah, this little piece here. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, is that the, uh, the, the um, nitric oxide has two major pathways to be formed. One is through L-arginine. The other one is through dietary ingestion of nitrites. Um, most of those nitrates, and those nitrates are taken through diet, through vegetables. But like I said, we're, you know, it's not very clear uh, how much nitrates are in the vegetables you're having. So nowadays there are supplements that you can take uh, that basically um, give you the nitrates that you would have been taking in through food. So I just want to stop there. I think. Hopefully this is a big help, and I'm going to add some notes into the into the um, into the show notes there with some of the links that you can read more about. And then if you have any questions, put them up there, and I will uh, come back with more information on the next live. All right, have a great day.